Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and thank you to our nominee. Um, Ms. Bradshaw, I really appreciate your service. I appreciate your family and their support of your service as well. Um, and before I turn to my questions, I just want to let you know I really enjoyed um, our visit in my office a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, and our discussion about the difficulties that New Hampshire is having with its aging VA infrastructure. And I just will continue to follow up with you and Secretary McDonough to ensure that those critical updates to the Manchester VA Medical Center are completed as quickly as possible. It's on the minds of all of the veterans in New Hampshire. Um, I also wanted to just start my questions by thanking you for all of your uh, discussion of and talking about the PACT Act. I'm glad we were able to pass it last summer. As you know and have talked about, it allows veterans to access a greater, more veterans accessing uh, more benefits that they have earned and deserved. Uh, in New Hampshire alone, since the passage of the PACT Act, veterans have already filed more than 2,000 PACT Act related claims and more than 1,200 veterans have enrolled in VA healthcare. In your testimony, you highlighted the importance of the new benefits provided under the PACT Act, as well as the need to reach out to veterans who have never come to the VA before. So you've talked a little bit uh, with uh, Senator Tuberville and others about this, but how will you ensure, if you are confirmed, that all veterans are able to access their health care and benefits under the PACT Act? Senator, thank you so much, and I enjoyed our conversation as well. Um, first and foremost, the uh, we have been able, but we still have to do more, working through our public affairs office, our outreach offices, and also just continuing to do the events. But we also need to hit the major platforms. We need to get creative. We need to talk to Peloton, and we need to be able to get to the women's magazines yeah. for our ladies, and we need to talk about cars, and be able to get VA in those different niches yep. where we're gonna find veterans who may or may not get their American Legion magazine, not that there's, I get my American Legion magazine, I should say that up front, but we just need to do, go beyond just our VSOs okay. and getting super creative. Well, please also feel free to reach out to us so we can be part of that creative work with, with you, because uh, we just know how important it is to our veterans. Um, your nomination is a truly historic opportunity, as Senator Duckworth has noted, to bring the perspective of a woman veteran to top leadership within the VA. So I want to bring to your attention an example of the importance of that perspective. Some women veterans who served on cultural support teams in Afghanistan have faced challenges in getting their combat engagements documented in their service records and getting their injuries recognized by the VA. These women served an important role in ensuring that our special forces were able to communicate with local Afghan women. We needed our women in the field there in combat situations to make that communication happen. Yet upon returning home, they received little recognition, recognition for their role in combat, many struggle still to get support for the injuries that they sustained during their service. How will you ensure that the VA learns from the perspective of veterans like these women and addresses the obstacles that they face in accessing health care and benefits? Senator, if confirmed, and quite frankly, even in my current role, I would love to meet with them to look for what the challenges they're having yeah. um, and what what they're finding that PACT Act doesn't cover, yeah. because that's the piece. You know, we have 27 presumptives that really have 20, 276 conditions. Right. And so if there's areas that we're not able so, to cover them. So forgive me for interrupting. Well, they, the issue here is that their work as cultural support teams isn't being documented in their record as combat service. Gotcha. So that, and, and I think it would be great to facilitate this yeah. conversation in this meeting, but this is where I think having women in leadership is so critically important for the mission of the VA. Yes, Senator. Okay. And lastly, um, as we discussed when we met, we both understand the importance of a successful transition process for service members separating from military service. Last year, my Bipartisan Solid Start Act was passed into law, which makes sure that the VA's Solid Start program will continue to be a resource for service members when they're leaving active duty. I continue to believe that the VA can do more to connect veterans to their VA benefits and their local community support networks during this critical period of just such enormous change. And you've talked about it a little bit, but if confirmed, how will you work to support veterans during this transition? For transition, we have to reach our veterans much sooner. 
Senator. They should understand what they're entitled to for the VA. And it's also a little confusing when you have Department of Labor for one piece, VA for another, and DOD for transition. And so, if confirmed, I would love to work with all three, to, with the DOD and Department of Labor, to ensure that we get one-stop shopping yeah. for our veterans, because it, it can be really confusing when you're not sure exactly what you're looking for, right. and we need all those resources in one, one location. Okay. Thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. Chair.